Hey guys and girls, my name's Dan, welcome back to The Forge. In this episode of Trust Me, I'm a Blacksmith, we're going to be working off the Dragon Heads build that we did a while back, and we are going to be making a slightly more complicated version with horns. This series is building on from the Ram. This is slightly more complicated than that, uh, than the Ram build. There's a more complicated world that goes into this project. But uh, if you are practicing it and you're trying to build your skills up, this is a great one. So enjoy the video and I will see you on the other side. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw a taper on the end of our 16mm uh, square, 5 8 square. What the taper wants to be about... Three inches long. This is almost exactly the same process in the round head build, which I'll leave a link to in, uh, in a card at the top here now. Get this taper down. So I'm just going to take the corner off of this, and I'm going to get it hot. Just going to mark this up now. Uh, from the start of the taper, back 30 mil, I'm going to put a mark. That's where I'm going to put my chisel cut, and then another 30 mil back. This is going to be my neck, so I'm going to have to neck in here. Now I put my chisel mark in here. I'm going to put a little centre dot mark here. And then I'm going to use the butchers, uh, use the fullering tools on the uh, fly press to create a little fuller either side of this line. So the other side of the footer that I've just put in on the fly press, I'm going to draw that down on the sides I've pulled in uh, until I match what I got with the fuller. Now I took it down to about mm, two thirds of the thickness, not quite half, not really three quarters, a bit more than three quarters, not quite half. And basically just doing this to develop a neck so I can distinguish between the head and the body of the poker. Okay, using my blacksmith's third hand, which is my between my legs, I am going to just take a squared off chisel and start putting some of these growth lines into the horns, or what will become the horns. Okay, and then I'm just going to turn this to the side, do the same on this side. And then turn him over. And do the same on this side. like so. Now I'm going to split that in half. Uh, with if you don't feel confident in your ability to cut this with a chisel, 
um, you could always discut this although you do lose a substantial amount of material if you if you discut it um, which isn't necessarily great but uh, it is one way to get through this okay get that hot again Okay, once again holding this just between my legs, I'm going to just work down until this is going to need splitting because I'm going to have to do that on something a bit softer than this anvil. Okay, I'm almost fully up to the last grocery in there. Right, I'm just going to get my cutting plate and then I'm going to finish the cut off through there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just open these, uh, open these uh, horns up. And you can do this a couple of ways. You can either do it, spread it that way on the anvil like so, or you can bring it over the side of the bic and do it this way, um, like so. Uh, you can also do it by tapping that way if you can't get in. But um, I think they're going to be fine. Now I'm just going to use a rasp. I'm going to clean these burrs out, and then we're going to get on with the rest of. The bit. Okay, so now to find that cut mark from earlier. Now it looks as though I may have been a bit too ambitious with the fullers. So I've just moved this slightly forward. Now you pretty much want the same material here as you've got here in order to get. A nice distribution of material. Now what I'm doing here is just splitting this open enough so that it can be bent. Um, I'm just going to quench this end. Oh, I'm not going to try and bend it. Oh, lovely. Just like so. So unlike our ram. we need a considerable amount more material um, than we did for the ram. Now, we have cut back here, so we don't have the buffer that we had in the previous project, in the ram project, uh, so our fire world needs to come right up to this end here and be in pretty good. So, uh, so I had to do this because I didn't want to lose the heat for the fire world. I wanted to do it all in one go. Um, so what I've done here is I put a little fuller in either side here and then drop this down so this produces our snout. And we've also got a space to put our eyes in and just here and here is where we're going to put our ears. So uh, last time I tried practice this, this split apart in, in the process. It looks like this one's probably going to go as well. Um, and this is probably due to the fact that I'm not very good at fire welding. It looks like it's together. It's all cooling down at the same sort of temperature. 
but once I start digging around in there with chisels and stuff, it's probably going to come apart. But that's not a problem. I think it's still going to look pretty cool. Um, I'm going to end. Uh, I'm now just going to put a, a little muzzle on here. So I'm going to bring this up to temperature. I'm just going to knock a little muzzle down. That's going to be the piece that I'm going to turn into the mouth. Uh, it also puts a bit of shape into the front end by pulling the nose out ever so slightly, and then we're going to work in the amv uh, in the vice to finish it off. Okay, so I'm going to find a relatively round corner on this side of the broken anvil, uh, and I'm just going to try and produce a snout, and it's also going to just draw down the bottom of the mouth for me. I think this looks good. You don't have to do this at all. Um, I'd, have, I'd even made some previously where I'd actually drawn this out into like a little beard, which does look pretty cool um, if you can be bothered. Uh, but I just want to pull it up into a little bit of a mouth there, like so, and I'm just going to bring this just back here, just tidy everything up a bit, give it a bit of a brush, and now we're ready to go and work at the anvil. I'm just going to slide this into the fire and just keep it warm, but at this sort of temperature, it's a good temperature. Uh, start marking everything up so you know where stuff's going to go. Okay, so I'm going to try and not get in the way whilst I'm marking this up so I can show you what I'm doing. Uh, but that's not always easy said as easy done. Okay, and that could also potentially hit the camera. So basically, all I'm going to do at this temperature is just take this centre punch, this lovely centre punch that Elliot's made me, and I'm just going to mark up the dragon. Uh, just so I know when it comes out of the fire at a hotter temperature I can get it in the vise and I can start marking up his features like so uh, I'm also just going to grab the oh you're out of focus there I'm, I'm also just going to grab the chisel and just put a bit of a cut across here for his mouth I'm just going to do that now I'm just going to come under here, like so, and just start marking the area where I'd like the mouth to separate. And again, if you don't feel like doing it with a chisel, you can always do it uh, with an angle grinder. Although, ears that, that I'm going to put here uh, don't really like that. <laughs> <laughs> so that doesn't give you the same result. So I'm going to quench this back end off a bit and I'm going to then put this back in the fire, get it up to a nice temperature, working temperature, and uh, oh, give that a go. We'll get his eyes in first. Right into me. Nice and flared. Can you get in there with a punch quite nicely. I'm going to do a bit on the nose while I'm here. try and do now is just try and pull out one of these teeth and the best way to do it is take a nice sharp chisel come in and sort of just curl a piece of steel up like that just like that and these are super easy to break off at this point so be mega careful I'm going to turn this over, I'm going to try it on the other side. Hopefully that will straighten the head back up. Do the same thing again. Just going to dig this in. Oh, I'm not going to be able to get in there. I'm going to have to turn it around the other way. Right, 
And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna grab this top horn here, pull this forward as much as I can, and then start working on twisting this horn up. Now, it's important to do these as hot as you can because uh, where you put the little notches in, they tend to give you a bit of bother, or can do at least anyway. Right. So just work in those horns now. Like the ram, you can do as much or as little with these as you want. Uh, you do need to keep them facing up though. The other side hot. So this is the point in the project where you can do basically as you please. I'm going to continue on turn this into a poker. Um, so that it can go up on the FC. I'm going to draw this neck down ever so slightly there in the... Just here, a bit of a brush. I'm just going to then bend that round, put a bit of a twist in it and then draw the uh, poker part out.
really hope you've enjoyed this video. I've really enjoyed making this. It's come out great. It is a far more complicated process than doing these uh, really simple little dragon's head. There will be a link for this video at the end. Um, but um, the ram's heads rely on quite a small, tight fire world, whereas these rely on this quite a large fire world. And then you have to then go and forge a snout down while it's at a fire welding temperature. And it's quite a complicated process. I really struggle with it. Um, uh, again, that little growth ring way, the way I did it with the chisel, that's a Ken's custom copy. I don't know where Ken's got that from, or if it's Ken's idea, it's amazing. Um, um, Ken's sort of uh, uses this rounded chisel to do these little growth rings. So I'll put a link to his video in there, his ram's head video. Um, there will also be a link somewhere to the Ram's Head video that I did. Um, but this came out really good. I'm really, really pleased with it. And it is, it was quite testing for me. And I'm hopefully it will be testing for you guys and girls at home who try it. Now, if you do try it, please send me some pics. I do love to get them. Um, I'm going to try and find a way that we can share the images up. Uh, a bit more of a community sort of thing to do. Um, I really, really love putting these projects up. And then people do them and send me images. Uh, We've had knives, we've had all sorts of things. So what I'd like to do is be able to share that a bit more, have a bit of a more community space. If anyone's got any ideas for that, um, anything but Facebook. <laughs> I hate Facebook. So anything but Facebook uh, sorts me out nicely. <laughs> cool. Um, and also, if you're interested in participating in these projects, please leave down in the comments uh, what you thought of this project and also uh, what you'd like me to do next. Now, a lot of the fire worlds, the sort of fold fire world animal heads are pretty much similar after this point. You basically have some, you draw a taper, you make them into horns, you fold the head over and you do something, some junk with the face and then you get yourself another animal. So you could do deers, I guess or sort of cows or whatever. I think you get a lot of animals out of this particular uh, this particular process. So maybe I want to steer away from those and try something slightly different. So different animal processes, I've done some birds before. There's also uh, the, you can do the deer hinges and stuff, stag hinges or whatever they're called. Just something a little bit more complicated or slightly different that involves some different techniques. Maybe I'll need to make some tooling. But anyway, long and short of it is if you, it, let me know in the comments. This, this uh, poker on the other hand, is going to be available for you to get your hands on. It's going to go a bit up on the Etsy. Um, the ram's head was made, it went up on the Etsy. The whole video was about promoting the Etsy a little bit. This is about promoting the Etsy a little bit. Go and check that out. There's all sorts of great stuff over there. Uh, everything from stock for making uh, hammers all the way through to hammers themselves. There's uh, the Trust Me I'm a Blacksmith t-shirts with Kitty the Power Hammer and also the Trust Me I'm a Blacksmith baseball caps. Um, there, that's a great way to support the channel. In fact, going over there and just having a nose around, you might see something you like. Oh yeah, there's a block brushes and all sorts of good stuff over there. Uh, and I'm working on expanding that as well so that there'll be more goodies up there for people. Okay, so I think that's everything for this video. Like I said, um, please leave your comments and let me know what you uh, animal would you like me to see and also go check out the Etsy. Go and check out the Instagram as well. I post relatively often up on the Instagram and I use that space to sort of promote videos sometimes and show off what we've been making in the workshop uh, if I'm happy with it. That's why they're not always stuff going up there. Um, and yeah, that's everything. So thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are a subscriber, please ring that bell for notifications because it tells you every time I make a video, I make videos as often as humanly possible. Um, I'm quite busy at the minute, so they're a bit... Yeah, anyway, uh, we have the anvil project coming up. I will be finishing the leg vise and then we've got some big build projects where we're gonna be making gates and railings and stuff. Well, whether or not they're as interesting as building an anvil, I don't know. But again, something you might want to let me know in the comments. <laughs> um, and I think, yeah, that's everything. So I'll leave a link up here to the dragon head bottle opener. I'll leave a link down here to making the ram's head. Uh, I'll leave another random video down here. And this is the subscribe button. Thank you for joining me. See you later. Bye bye.